Link wasn't used to being afraid. He faced so many ferocious monsters and fought so many horrific battles by this point that not much could even startle him anymore. By now he pressed his back against the cold, damp wall and hugged his arms to himself, shivering with more than the subterranean chill. What, what are we going to do, Navi? He whispered. The exit's two levels above us, and that's just the bottom of the ladder. They both held their breath as the flame of the lantern guttered and dimmed even further, but it didn't go out. Link looked back at Navi, whose glow was now brighter than the lantern. I'll... I'll have to go, Navi said slowly. I can fly straight up through that hole in the ceiling and go fetch some more oil. But you won't be able to carry it. Navi bobbed in a sorry attempt at her usual feisty retorts. Haven't you figured out by now that we fairies have levitation magic? It's not just our wings that let us fly, you know. To prove it, she grabbed the handle of the lantern and pulled it upward. The blush glow that's always surrounded her body oozed down the sides of the lantern, until it was outlined in blue as well. Unfortunately, the motion snuffed out the flame at last. Soon, the only illumination came from the blue glow. Somewhere in the heavy darkness around him, something heavy dragged across the ground. Breath catching in his throat, Link pressed himself as hard as he could into the corner. His hand sunk deep into the squishy pile of mud and whatever refused was down here, but he didn't care. He thought he was going to scream, but his voice came out in a ragged whisper. Navi, Navi, please don't leave me. The fairy hesitated, clearly torn between the logical course of action and the need to protect her charge from immediate danger. I'll be back as soon as I can, she said anxiously. Just keep playing the song until I come back, okay? And before he could scream after her that no, it was not okay, she was flying with all her might towards the ceiling. Her glow briefly illuminated the jagged hole he'd fallen through, and she was gone. Utter darkness fell upon him. He thought it was dark before, but now he could feel the shadows pressing in on all sides, keeping him immobile and helpless. A low moan echoed through the dark chamber, bouncing off stone walls till Link couldn't tell where it had come from. A chill ran down his spine, and everything in his body froze stiff. For one horrifying moment, Link thought he was paralyzed like every time those awful creatures shrieked. He could almost feel those dead, cold arms around his neck. But no. His fingers convulsed around the hilt of his sword, and he drew it in a shuddering breath as softly as he could. Slowly, so as not to make any sound, Link got to his feet, eyes straining to even see through he knew it was no use. But just as he shifted his right leg towards to get into a defensive stance, his heel hit a slick patch of the grind coating the floor, and he lost his balance. He fell smartly on his rear in a squelchy patch of something, the splash echoing far too loudly. The memory of that scream had done no justice to the reality of hearing it again. The grating sound seemed to rip the air apart, darting like an arrow right into his heart, which instantly turned cold as ice. This time, he really was paralyzed and he was forced to sit there and listen to the eager moans and shuffling footsteps of not one, but three redeads. It seemed the only thing that could still move in his entire body was his heart, and it pounded faster and faster as the shambling corpses drew nearer. Slowly, he felt the paralysis wearing off, and he begged his muscles to move, to get to his feet, to raise his sword and protect himself. But just as his muscles unfroze, and he was finally able to get his feet under him, cold hand grasped his right arm. Link yelled and lashed out wildly with his sword, but another clammy hand closed around his wrist. It gripped as in yielding as death itself. Link frantically struggled to free himself, but then he felt bony arms curl around almost lovingly around his neck. Throwing all dignity to the wind, he screamed because he knew what was coming next. The redeads clinging to his arms also drew closer, caressing his living flesh. Link thrashed as hard as he could, but he was only a child. He stood no chance against their undead strength. Sharp teeth pierced the side of his neck, his right wrist, and his left bicep. The redeads moaned as they sucked the life from his veins. These living corpses would never slake their thirst. They would keep drinking until he was a shriveled corpse like them. His sword fell from his nerveless fingers to clatter uselessly on the ground. Tears welled up in his eyes. So this was the pitiful end of the great hero of time, dying cold and alone at the bottom of a well. Ganondorf would never be defeated. Evil would spread and cover even the last few bright spots in the world. 
He would never see Hyrule's beauty again. He would never see the sunrise, nor watch the sun set and the stars light up the night sky. He would never see Navi again. With the last of his dwindling strength, Link managed to bring his empty left hand up to the chain he wore around his neck. His fingers fumbled on the three gems that hung there, until finally he found the red one and twisted it just so. Fire blazed around him in an expanding dome, ripping the re-deads off and throwing them against the walls of the chamber that were briefly illuminated by the wild flames. The re wailed as dense fire consumed them, the only thing that could completely destroy them. Soon, they were nothing but piles of ash. But as soon as the fires died out and Link was thrown into darkness, he heard more shuffling in the darkness, more moans and longing wails on all sides. The rest of the Redads had heard the commotion and came as fast as their emaciated legs could take them, all of them longing to feed on his blood. Link felt around frantically for his sword, but he couldn't find it. More tears fell from his eyes as he hunted around blindly on the ground. He could tell that his magic reserves were depleted. Din's fire would not save him a second time. A cold hand brushed against his arm, and with a wild yell, Link jerked back. Before any of them could shriek at him again, he ran as fast as he could away from the nearest moans, rushing blindly into the darkness. He almost ran headfirst into a wall, then followed it until it came to a corner. After feeling around for a few minutes, Link realized he must be at the dead end of a hallway. He could hear the shuffling footsteps follow him in inexorably. He could hear the shuffling footsteps follow him inexorably, pressing his back against the wall and squeezing his eyes shut. Link waited for the end. Then, give me strength, he whispered desperately, repeating a simple prayer he heard the villagers say. Nehru, give me wisdom. Furore, give me... Nehru, give me wisdom. Furore, give me... Then he remembered what his fear-clouded mind had forgotten. With trembling hands, he fumbled his ocarina out of his pouch and his belt. His fingers flew over the holes as he played the shrill notes of the sun song. And even though it was the haziest, sloppiest rendition he ever played, he could hear the redeads shivering to a complete halt. With an exhausted sigh of relief, Link slid down the wall to sit on the floor, the ocarina still clutched in his hands. For the first time since the lantern had started to dim, he felt the mind-numbing fear begin to ebb away. His wounds were beginning to throb, and now that danger was gone for the moment, he thought he could drift off to sleep right there, but he knew he only had minutes before the magic of the music would wear off and the Redeads would continue their advance, grimly clutching his ocarina and waiting for his savior. Could you possibly go any slower? Navi grumbled, watching the large woman carefully pouring oil into the lantern, making sure that she didn't spill a single drop. Now, don't rush me, little fairy, the woman said pursing her lips as she continued to pour at the same maddeningly slow rate. This oil cost me twenty rupees a pint, I'll have you know. You should just be glad I owe that sweet boy a favor for finding my Billy when he ran away from home. Fluttering around anxiously over the woman's head, Navi bit her tongue and did her best to remain quiet. No one knew that they'd gone down the well. They'd just scold Link for doing something foolish, and blame each other for letting a child wander in such a dangerous place, so Link hadn't bothered to tell anyone. Never mind that Link had never been an ordinary child even before all the time travel. These stupid villagers never seemed to understand exactly how much Link had risked and sacrificed for their sakes. Sacrifice. Navi went cold all over, and her wings drooped a little. How was Link doing down there? She'd been gone so long. This stupid village didn't have a proper potion shop, at least not in this time. So she'd had to go door to door asking for favors until she'd finally found someone willing to spare a little oil for the lantern. Link was probably even more cold and frightened than when she'd left him. Maybe he hadn't been able to keep the redheads back. Maybe he was hurt. Or even... There, the woman said, breaking into Navi's thoughts. She finally screwed the lid back on her jar of oil. I'll even light it for you. See? A little patience never did anyone a lick of harm. Navi grabbed the glass case and slid it into place the minute the woman took her tapper away and grabbed the handle, letting her glow extend around the entire lantern, which was much heavier than before. She was about to speed out the open window when the woman called her back. Take this! She said, lifting a tightly sealed jar filled with white liquid from the stone trough in the back of her house, where freezing water from the mountain streams kept her food cold. 
This is the last of the milk I got from Lon Lon. You take it to Link and make sure he drinks every last drop, here. I don't know what's going on, but I dare say Link's got himself into some kind of trouble or other. She gave Navi a knowing look. Trust me, he's just like my Billy. He'll be halfway to breaking his neck if you're not there to look after him. For a surprised moment, Navi could only surround the jar of milk with her magic as well. She didn't quite understand it, but all of a sudden she felt some sort of connection with this woman she barely knew and had little patience for. And that connection was... Link! She gasped, zooming out of the window with the lantern and jar in tow like oddly shaped fairy companions. As fast as she could without extinguishing the tongue of fire in the lantern, she flew through the village and dropped down into the well. Almost immediately, shadows threatened to engulf her, and the sky became a mere blue spot far above her. Shoving aside all of her nervous thoughts, she plunged into the darkness, desperately trying to remember the route they'd taken. Foul things shifted and scuttled around her, moving away from the sudden source of blinding light, but Navi ignored them. By itself, light wouldn't keep the monsters away, but it seemed that evil things instinctively feared and shunned any source of illumination. After running into two dead ends and nearly getting caught in a Skultula web, Navi finally found the jagged hole in the floor. She darted down and scanned the room for any sign of her friend. She wasn't sure if this place looked less scary or not now that the lamp was bright again. A greenish ooze covered the floor in large puddles, hissing ominously at the occasional drop of water falling into it. A few breathless moments later, she found the corner where she'd left Link. She stopped dead in her tracks. There were a few charred lumps lying around, and streaks in the grime that looked like the aftermath of a fight, but no Link. His sword and shield lay discarded on the ground. A splotch of something that looked suspiciously like blood mared the highland crest on the shield. Slowly, Nobby sank towards the ground, her heart turning to stone inside her. Then, she heard it. The few trilling notes of the sun song echoed around the dark room and she felt a shiver of power wash over her in a wave. It was like the sun finally bursting from the clouds on a rainy day, turning all of the raindrops into sparkling diamonds. Navi flew as fast as she could in the direction the song had come from, down one of the cramped tunnels leading off from the larger room. At the end of the tunnel, a crowd of redheads stood frozen in their tracks. Navi gaped in horror as she passed over their heads. She'd never seen so many in one place, and one was plenty more than she ever wanted to see. And there was Link. His back pressed into the corner of the tunnel, curled up as small as possible. The redheads were barely two feet from him. Link was pale and covered in grime. Blood oozed from wounds in his neck and his arms. Navi winced at how much was smeared across his pale skin and green clothes. Link's head rested warily against the wall behind him. His eyes were closed, and he panted weakly. He clutched his ocarina close to his chest, ready to play the song again. As the light from the lantern enveloped him, Link's eyes slowly opened. He blinked, and then his eyes widened, and a fragile, tentative smile broke through. Navi... I'm here, Link. Navi set down her burdens carefully so they wouldn't break, then zipped over to get a closer look at him. You're here, Link repeated softly, cupping his hands around her and holding her against his cheek, the closest he could come to hugging her. Navi leaned against his cold skin, rubbing her hand across it in what she hoped was a soothing way. You're okay now, she whispered. We're going to get out of here. To her alarm, he choked out a little sob. A stream rolled past her, getting her fingers wet. Navi, I was so, so scared. She slipped between his fingers so she could face him. You listen to me now, she said firmly. We're going to get out of here, understand? I'm pretty sure this is the freakiest place in all of Hyrule, and I don't ever want to see it again. But we're gonna make it out of here. I won't let you do anything else. Link stared at her for a moment, then sniffed and wiped his eyes, smearing the grime on his face even more. Okay, he said shakily. Just don't tell Sheik. Drink your milk, Nobby said, already fluttering away. 
I'll go fetch your sword.' 